straight back to how it is now. But, um, if you click on select font, it will take you to this screen. Um, you'll see the screen often, it's where you open files, you go through folders. But you have to download fonts from font websites and go into the file which you saved it to and then select it and that will become your font. But I haven't got any, I think the font is perfectly fine as it is. Now the font size, if you're not very good at seeing, if you've got poor eyesight or something, you can knock up the size of the font, or if you just prefer it that way. Um, so that's quite nifty for whoever's in need of it. It's, I think I was only 11 as default, but I could have clicked restore default to take it back to it. I'll just give a demonstration on that. Knock it up to the biggest, click restore to default, and it's on 11 again. You've got the languages, that's all your choice. If you want to have it set as, say, Japanese, um, actually that hasn't worked. <laughs> yeah. um, but, oh, I see why. Select buttons while it's on Japanese, and it seems like only a few of the buttons have actually changed. So, um, I think French is good if I can find it. Um, you click on French, you've got the button selected, and all the buttons go to French. So, but if you're French, I doubt that you'll be listening to this tutorial and understanding it. So, obviously I'm going to use English. Now I have to say the toolbox and the tool tips. You select these buttons and it will apply the language to whatever you've selected. Um, it don't matter with English because that's all default. Um, so I've never used that button in my life. <laughs> so we'll go on to themes. I think there'll be a separate tutorial on this which I'll create but basically it's where you can change the look of the screen either to um, rounded or you can keep it a default. If you decide to make one yourself you can use all these different controls but like I say um, <coughs> basically I'll go through this in a separate tutorial even if it's not in the Noobs Pro guide. Um, we'll go to autosave and have a look at that. Basically it's all about the thing saving it automatically I believe. Um, this is also something I've never used before. Um, but it seems to be set anyway. Um, this is the length of time that you want it to save at. So I can go all the way down to one minute and it will every one minute save it um, I'll put that back to five um, open recent that's where you open a recent um, model I think I oh, know it's open a recent UI font but like I say I've never used this before so I can't really tell you about it um, this is all about the positioning of the false lights. It's called false lights because when you take a picture of your image, the positioning and the colours of the lights don't matter because it all relies on this lamp. But this is just to show you the how the lights could be to help you decide the lighting. Um, if you deselect these as you can see on the cube if you have a look at the cube um, shift and middle mouse button to pan if you deselect the lights or select the lights it changes the false light but you'll notice that this gets pretty dark here 
but it isn't actually like that when you take a picture of your image through this, which is the camera. So you can also change the direction of the light by moving this sphere and releasing it, but that's not necessary at the moment. But it's all up to you, so I'll take from. Um, this goes over the game sounds, it's all the system things. Um, yeah, I don't think all this is necessary. Um, I just thought you might be interested in this. File paths, I've never used that neither. I tend to use, I think actually, if it, thinking about it, when you open the file which I shown you earlier to get a font which you've downloaded, you can click here and select a folder and say I've saved my fonts, decide to save my fonts in this folder. I select um, select font path and now in future when I go to open a font it will be in that folder and it will automatically take me to that folder and you can do it with all these different things so now if you've changed settings and you like the way the settings are you go to file and then go down to save default settings so I've changed this light now you can still tell so I'll go to save default settings for an example and when you open a new um, page or new item it will basically click on new or raise all it will basically stay as that whenever I open a new file um, it also matters on the positioning of the view that you've got if I save default settings on the camera facing that way or the view being that way then when I open a new file it's basically the same if you then decide you're not happy with it and you prefer the default screen you just go to load factory settings erase all and it will go into top view as the factory settings um, and if you are, if you, oops, I keep on forgetting to click that. Um, if you decide to save this now, you go to um, save default settings, and now um, that is how it's going to appear in future when you open new stuff. Um, I think that's pretty clear for the top window um, so let's go back to the guide and have a look at that okay then here we are on the book um, so we are now looking at the buttons window properly um, I believe I mentioned a slight bit about it but we will have a more in-depth look on it so in the book it gives you quite a bit of information but I will try and show you everything to the best of my ability um, so if you want to check out the book don't forget to go on to Google search Blender Mint Pro like you can see there and it should be the um, first result as you can see highlighted in purple so let's go into blender now let me close down this one I've got two windows open okay then so this is the buttons window now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit control and up um, and there we go it puts it to the top of the screen now if you want to move this around which I don't see why you would then you can use the scroll wheel